the backstory of the Salvation Army, especially in San Diego. So we thought here uh, for the Big Biz Show, nationwide, coast to coast, although our second hour is not national television, it's radio across the country, and right here for our regional San Diego home, uh, 1700 AM, we thought we would bring in the guy, the what they call the divisional commander. Do I call you George? Do I call you Major Baker? Do I or just or, or do I just call you your your highness? <laughs> George is fine. Oh, go, well, great. First of all, great <laughs> to meet you. I think I'm going to ask you the question everybody wants to know. First of all, how does how do I get to ring the bell and grab the bucket myself? Is is I think is there is there a way to do that? Can I sign myself up this year? Because that sounds like a pretty good gig to get in a beach chair next to one of those kettles and ring a bell all day long. Oh yeah, we uh, are you allowed to do that, or, is, or do you have to do you have to to build up to that position? Oh no, no, we take volunteers uh, at the kettles, and uh, it's as easy as going on our website or calling one of our uh, your local Salvation Army unit and letting them know that you want to do that and. Uh, you know, we'd encourage everybody to take a chance at doing that. You know that I went online to find out how much money you guys make okay. uh, uh, on those kettles. And, it, you know, I have to say that it varies by city. Yes, it does. Some cities are pulling in a million bucks a year. Some cities are pulling in, uh, you know, 80000 a year. I think, that, and I can't remember what the New York City number was. Is there an average, or are you guys allowed to say that? What, what the, I mean, is that your main source of donations, is, are those red kettles? Well, it's it's one of our main sources of, of donations, yes. Uh, and in some communities, it's their primary. Uh, so basically pocket change. People can, or, do yeah. people, or do people actually write checks and drop them in there? Or is it typically what you got in your pocket? We do get some checks, but it, it's typically what people have, you know, a couple dollars and some loose change uh, goes into the kettle. But, uh, you know, when you have uh, as many as we put out in a year, uh, it all adds up. Well, I don't think a lot of people uh, know what you guys do. You've been involved uh, uh, since 1983. Uh, uh, as far as far as the as an officer, but you've been involved with the Salvation Army your whole life. Tell your story. Well, I grew up in the Salvation Army. My parents were Salvation Army officers. I'm actually a fifth generation Salvation Army officer. So this is what they did for a living. This is what uh, yeah, my family has done no pretty kidding. much since the 1890s for a living. No kidding. And um, and so I'm the fifth generation, and we have a son now who's a Salvation Army officer up in Burbank, California. So. Uh, the so tradition are you, continues. Are you related to Captain Joseph McPhee? Isn't that the guy's name? John McPhee, Joseph McPhee, the guy that started the thing back in the 1800s? Joseph McPhee. Uh, no, I'm not related. But, uh, yeah, he's uh, he's the one that came up with the mastermind for the kettles. And and, and, and basically it was, it was because the way I heard the story is because he was, uh, uh, he was upset because of so many poor people. And believe it or not, I heard it was San Francisco where this entire thing started. That's correct. No kidding. Yep. I don't think anybody realizes that. I think everyone thinks the Salvation Army started in New York. Well, actually, the organization started in London in okay. 1865, came to the United States in 1880. But the Kettles, uh, the kettles became uh, the, the thing in uh, 1893, I believe it was, in San Francisco. Okay, tell us about what you guys do, because, I, because I, for 130 years you've been in San Diego. Um, and, I, and, I, and I think there's a couple of facts here that nobody realizes. You guys are behind the scenes as much as anybody in helping, uh, in helping the downtrodden here in San Diego. Well, we have a variety of programs that we offer here in the community, from transitional living facilities to uh, drug, and re- drug and alcohol rehab programs. We have five senior living facilities. Uh, we have, uh, throughout the division, uh, core units that uh, provide needs in the local communities. Um, This division covers actually the four most southern counties of California. So we're Imperial County, San Bernardino County, Riverside County, and San Diego County. So, uh, you know, uh, this is what happened. And and I've, I've, you know, I've been on the air here in San Diego for, you know, better part of 20 something, 25 years. And homelessness is something that that we talk about, not because we're obligated to do so. It's because a problem that we can't seem to solve here. How important is it in your mind, by the way, as long as we're talking about this, that we continue transitional housing, or is are we just kicking the can down the road doing that? Because you know you have two guys, you have the distractors, and you have guys to support that. I think transitional housing is necessary, personally. Well, we have seen uh, the impact that transitional housing can have on an individual and on a family, and we believe that there's uh, definitely a place for transitional housing. It's not for everybody, but we do believe that there is a need for it, and uh, and that's why we offer it. What about housing first? You know the how the the federal model whereby uh, you know there's. You know, it costs something like seventeen thousand six hundred and fifty dollars a year for us to, to to deal with a homeless person regarding emergency room visits and jail stays and traditional housing, so on and so forth. If we put them in a in a in a, in a hotel or a, a apartment 
with a roommate and a caseworker, those costs drop down to about $9,000 a year. That's a significant amount of money. Have you seen uh, uh, across the country, because obviously, I mean, we've errat- they've eradicated, they say, veteran homelessness in Utah by, by doing that. Is, that. is that a viable option, or is it just another idea that, 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 is, uh, that, y- that is yet to be tried and true, in your opinion? Well, I think for some people it is a viable option, but for people who have uh, drug, and, drug and alcohol issues, right. um, our experience has been that uh, those people still have needs beyond just getting into a place to stay at night. And uh, while that takes them off the streets and out of the cold, if they're in a cold weather city, uh, that's great. But unless we address the other needs, right. the the chances of them remaining homeless are pretty slim, sure. has been our experience. Sure. His name is Major, Major George Baker. He's divisional commander. When you get up in the morning, uh, George, and you say, this, these are our directives today, are your directives uh, as much or as important to get volunteers as it is to help uh, the people are trying to help? Because I have to believe volunteers are the life's blood of this deal. Oh, our organization would not exist were it not for volunteers. We we simply uh, don't have the resources to pay enough people to do the things we do. So we rely on volunteers. Uh, we consider our, the volunteers to be the army behind the army. Talk about the talk about the opportunities because I think people. I mean, I, we hear every year, and, and 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 I'm encouraged to see that I'm hearing more and more people say, you know what, this year for Thanksgiving morning we're going to go feed the homeless. This year for Christmas Eve we're going to go out there and help Salvation Army. Talk, talk about because listen, we're we're in almost in March here. Now's the time. We don't just help in Thanksgiving and Christmas, right? This is an all-year event for you. Right. And we have, throughout uh, San Diego County and the outlying areas, we have literally hundreds of volunteer opportunities, from teaching language to teaching art, nutrition, and fitness classes to adults and seniors to coaching and leading recreational programs for youth to uh, intergenerational programs. 